Welcome to the Ventura Water Reclamation Facility. My name is Vince and I will be your virtual tour guide on today's tour of our plant. Every time you flush the toilet, wash your hands, take a shower, or do your laundry, that water all comes to this facility to be cleaned before we discharge into the Santa Clara River estuary. We treat roughly seven to eight million gallons a day of wastewater. Today, our tour is going to consist of following the liquid stream and the solid stream throughout our facility. Our first stop brings us to our Headworks facility. This is where all of the wastewater from out the city comes to our facility. Here, we remove large items such as rags or paper towels and grit, which can pose issues to the treatment system further on. Let's go inside and take a look. This is the bar screen. The bar screen system picks up paper towels, rags, and puts them onto a conveyor belt to be hauled to a landfill. The grit and rags that are collected from the bar screen enters the grip box, which will be hauled off to a landfill for final disposal. After the water leaves Headworks, it comes to the primary clarifiers. This is where we get the main separation between solid and liquid. So behind me are the primary clarifiers. These use gravity to separate the liquid and the solids. Anything that's heavy sinks to the bottom and any light material or water stays at the top to go move on to the next process. So from this point on, the water at the top is gonna to go one way and all the solids that are at the bottom are gonna go another way. So from here, we're gonna have two different streams. We're gonna have the water stream and we're gonna have the solid stream at the bottom. So now we're gonna follow the water stream which is gonna take us to our activated sludge tanks. Come on, let's go. The next step in our treatment process is the activated sludge tanks. In these tanks, we have good bacteria and bad bacteria. The good bacteria eats the bad bacteria. So we have to maintain a constant balance of good bacteria versus bad bacteria. All organisms need three things to live, food, water, and air. Since this bacteria needs air to survive, we pump air through the bottom of the tanks so they can breathe. This process consists of two main objectives, nitrification and denitrification. In the nitrification process, we convert ammonia into nitrate. In the denitrification process, we convert nitrate to nitrogen gas. Nitrate is dangerous to the wildlife where the water will flow after it leaves the plant. So it's very important for us to take that nitrate out of the water and convert it into nitrogen gas. This is the main step of our biological treatment process. During this process, we don't use any chemicals. From this point, we're gonna to go to our next step, which is the secondary sedimentation tanks. This treatment process is called secondary sedimentation. This is just like primary sedimentation, but the bacteria that's in the water sink to the bottom very slowly. As you can see here, the water will overflow the weirs and then go on to the next treatment process. Anything that doesn't go over the weirs settles to the bottom and is reused and recycled into the aeration system. As you can see, we have our local wildlife that enjoys our secondary sedimentation tanks also. The water that goes through the weir comes over our waterfall and then flows underground to the next step in our process, the tertiary treatment filters. These mixed media filters are made up of different types of sand and gravel. They clean the water to where it can be reused for irrigation and landscaping purposes. The water moves through these low pressure filters and remove all inorganic compounds. So far throughout this process, we still haven't used any chemicals. From here, the water is gonna to flow to our chlorine contact tanks. This brings us to the last stage of our wastewater treatment. Here, the water is disinfected with chlorine. So basically, it smells like a swimming pool. These chemicals have to be stored in a facility for safety purposes. Any other living organisms that make it to this point are killed in the disinfection process. So the water has to remain in these tanks for a certain amount of time in order to chlorinate the water properly. Once the water leaves this tank, we have to dechlorinate the water, which means take the chlorine out of the water so it's not harmful to the birds and the receiving water. To do that, we use sulfur dioxide to dechlorinate the water. 
Once the water is dechlorinated, it can be released to the wildlife ponds and then ultimately to the Santa Clara River estuary. When the water first entered our facility, it was dark and murky. Now it is clear, clean, and safe for the environment. So that's it for the liquid portion of the tour. Now we're gonna talk about the solid portion. Remember the part that we talked about in the primary clarifiers that settles to the bottom? That ends up here in the digesters. These digesters work like stomachs. They have to maintain a certain temperature in order for the bugs to live and break down the bad contaminants that are left in the sludge. The bacteria in these tanks create methane gas. That methane gas is captured and we're able to generate electricity from it. That process is called cogeneration, where we power an engine using methane gas as fuel, which in turn turns a generator to create electricity. Using this treatment process, our plant is able to generate about 30% of our electrical needs. So that concludes our tour of the Ventura Water Reclamation Facility. I'd like to thank you for taking this virtual tour. Hopefully soon, you'll be able to take a tour in person here at the plant.